Do you trust science? Of course you do. You trust gravity to stick you to the ground. You trust friction to stop your car. You trust that E equals MC squared because, well, I don't know, it just does. But do you fully trust science? Enough to risk getting your face smashed in? Ed does because Ed believes in the conservation of energy. Now, that's basically a fancy phrase that means, essentially, if I hold this iron and hold it up next to Ed's face and let go, it won't swing back and belt him one. That's right, isn't it, Ed? I hope so. OK, well, let's see. Good. Now, the reason Ed's still got a face is because the iron won't swing back even as far as the point where it started. And that's because of friction acting up here and air resistance on the iron itself as it moves through the air. But what if we make the weight a lot heavier and the swingy bit a lot longer? I wonder. Heavier and longer. Well, a 100-foot crane would be a start. And then something heavy to hang off the end. Like this big lump of concrete, maybe. It worked on a small scale, so will it work like this? Right, well, we're all set to go. Three, two, one. So Ed keeps his teeth. Right, that all works fine. If we release the rock from just in front of Ed's face, it can't swing back and give him a smack. But let's try something a bit more risky. When we set the rock off from over there, it swung to a point in the air over here. And if we can work out where that point is, then we should be able to release the rock. And if we've worked it out properly, it should stop just short of Ed's face. It should. Now we're moving a little bit into the realms of the unknown. We have to make sure all the calculations are correct if the rock isn't going to obliterate Ed's Oxford-educated brain. Actually, I've had a thought. There's no point making it... If we do it precisely equidistant, we can go closer, because when we release it... No, no, because when we release it, that's the whole point of it. When we release, there's friction at the top and there's wind resistance on the rock as it goes through the air, and it'll fall short. Because it's coming from there, it'll, it won't go that far. So we can afford to go closer. I don't know by how much. It can go a bit, and then that's when we can start just Try testing it. Move on. Right, here's how we're going to do it. We'll release it from that end. It'll go, obviously, swing towards the tower, and somebody's got to get a measure by eye of where it, it would end. First, a test run with a mannequin. Oh, yes. Yes. You reckon it's on the bar? Yeah, it's halfway over the bar. Okay. Halfway over the bar. Okay, good luck, mannequin. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that could have been me. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. Rough guesses are probably not what we're after right now, or it's going to be big plastic surgery bills for Ed. <laughs> Releasing the rock from a slightly lower position should do, and with no pushing. The moment has arrived. Time to strap Ed down, put away the calculators, and give it a go. Eight, three, two, one. Oh! So Ed survived with all his teeth intact, and all good scientists can sleep in their beds tonight. Science works. Mm.